Good evening, boys and girls. Mrs. Manalfo here with your very, very first flip math lesson. We're moving into Unit 7, which is on long division. And long division has a lot of steps and it has a lot of process in it, just like our multiplication that we did with many numbers. But what I want you to remember is, as long as you follow the steps, and you know Mrs. Manalfo has a fun and exciting way to introduce the new steps, you'll be able to do these problems just fine. Please remember that at any time you can pause and rewind so that you can go back and review anything that you missed. Alright, so Unit 7 on long division. What is division? And I know we've talked about this a lot of times. When do you divide? When is division appropriate? Um, what division is, is it's breaking down or splitting apart of large groups into smaller groups, just like we talked about how multiplication builds up. Well, division breaks things down. Um, division undoes what multiplication does. So when do you divide? When is it appropriate to divide? What I want you to do now is give us an example of a real life situation that you can think of where it would be appropriate to divide. And I want you to write that in section one of your homework sheet under Global Connections. And you can pause this video now to do that. Okay. What you're used to seeing in division, the types of division problems we've done so far, um, are the ones that are written like this. 30 divided by 6 equals 5, or 18 divided by 2 equals 9, with this type of division sign. And those are normally just your fast facts of division that you should have learned that are related to your multiplication facts. But we're in fourth grade now, so we're stepping it up a bit. Now, you're going to see division problems look like this. What I like to do is I like to call this little thing right here, I like to call that the house. And we talk about numbers that are inside the house, numbers that live outside of the house, and numbers that live on top of the house or on the roof. So you're going to be seeing uh, division problems like this from now on, especially in long division. We're getting rid of that old symbol. So what I want you to do is in your notebooks, after I've gone through all this new vocabulary, I want you to copy down the example problem, the new vocabulary words, and what each of the words mean. Because that's going to help you in your math talk. When you're explaining your problems to your partners, you're going to need to use these larger vocabulary words to describe the numbers that you're talking about. So here we have our house. The number that lives inside the house is called the dividend. The dividend is the large number that's being divided, the large number that we're trying to break down into smaller groups. The number that lives on the outside of the house is called the divisor, and that's the number that we're dividing by. We're trying to see how many of these go into this. Once you've solved your problem, your final answer goes on top, and it's called the quotient. The quotient lives on top of the house or on the roof. And the quotient is the answer to a division problem. So you can take a moment to pause and copy this example into um, part two of your homework sheet. All right, so here we come to our fun acronym that's going to help us remember all the long steps that it takes to complete a long division problem. When I think of division, I often think about food, dividing up cookies or dividing up cupcakes. I know we use food as our examples a lot of how we need to divide among students or among family members if you're sharing a pizza or something like that. So of course it fits that we have food in our little acronym that helps us remember the steps to multiplication. So whenever you see a problem like this, I want you to write on top of your page, does McDonald's sell cheeseburgers? Just like I make you do with order of operations. I make you write those steps on top. It's a really good thing to be able to look back to if you get stuck on a step. Helps you know what to do next. All right, so let's look at the first letter of each of the words. The D in does is going to stand for division. The M stands for multiplication. The S for subtraction. The C for check. The B for bring down. And if you follow all of these steps in this particular order, it will make for a very happy student and a very happy teacher. All right, so let's get started. Example one, we have a larger number living inside of our house than we're used to. It's not a typical old 36. So we need to bump it up a step and do our steps of long division. So step one, 
you're going to ask yourself, how many times does my divisor go into the numbers in my dividend? Now, we're not going to deal with the whole entire 366 right now. We're going to break it down and look at each place value one by one. So the first thing you want to ask yourself is, does the divisor go into the first number of the dividend? So does 6 go into 3? And the answer is obviously going to be no, because the 3 is smaller than the 6. You cannot fit a 6 in 3. So the next step, you're going to pull in the next number, the number in the tens place. And you're going to ask yourself, how many times does 6 go into 36? If we know our fast facts, we should know that that answer is 6. So we're going to place a 6 up on the roof to show that 6 goes into 36 six times. So we've done step one. We've done the first step of division. The next step, I want you to put a little multiplication sign on the corner of your roof, on the corner of your house. And you're going to take the number you put up here and multiply it by the divisor. What is 6 times 6? 36. You're going to place that number beneath, lining up your place values, beneath the number um, living inside the house. So we've done our next step of multiplication. Then we move on to the S for subtraction. You're going to create a subtraction problem. You're going to subtract 36 minus 36. And when you do that subtraction, for this particular problem, you come up with 0. Okay, so we've done subtraction. The next step is to create a new division problem on this line. So I'm just going to bring down a little curved line to make a new house. And I'm going to bring down my 6. Now we need to check to see if our divisor goes into the answer of, to our subtraction problem. So in this case, the answer was 0. So does 6 go into 0? That answer would be no. So then we need to move directly to the next step, which is the B for bring down. So I want you to draw an arrow to the next place value. This is the number that we haven't dealt with yet. We haven't touched it. We're going to bring it straight down. So now we have a new division problem of 6 divided by 6. So you need to ask yourself, how many times does 6 go into 6? And that answer would be 1. You're going to go up on top because on the roof is where the answers go. You're going to put a 1. We've divided. Now we're going to multiply. 1 times 6 equals 6. You put it down below. And then our next step is subtraction. And 6 minus 6 equals 0. We have no other numbers to bring down. We cannot divide 0 by 6, so our problem is now complete. And the answer would, of 366 divided by 6 would be 61. That's our quotient. Okay? Let's try another example problem. And then I'm going to set you on your own. All right. Our next example is 565 divided by 5. So again, we're going to start with our divisor and our very first number of our dividend. So you ask yourself, does 5 go into 5? The answer is yes. And then you ask yourself, how many times? 5 goes into 5 once. Since we're dealing with this number right here, your answer must go directly above that number. So I'm going to put my 1 right above my 5. Our next step is multiply. We take our 1 and we times it by 5. 1 times 5 equals 5 and we put it directly below the number we were dealing with. Now we move on to subtraction. 5 minus 5 is 0. Create a new house, bring down your divisor, and now we check to see, does 5 go into 0? The answer would be no. So then you need to bring down the next number, 6. Now we go back to division. Does 5 go into 6? Yes, but it doesn't go in evenly, but that's okay. You need to ask yourself, how many times does 5 go into 6 without going over? So that answer would be just once, because 1 times 5 is 5. If I were to put a 2 up here and say it goes in twice, 
2 times 5 would be 10, and that's over 6. So you have to make sure that your answer is under whatever you're dividing by. So now we go to multiplication. 1 times 5 is 5. Bring it down. And now I subtract. 6 take away 5 is 1. All right. Now I check to see if my 5 goes into 1. I create a new division problem. 1 cannot be divided by 5, so then I bring down my final number. My new division problem says 15 divided by 5. So you ask yourself, how many times does 5 go into 15? And it goes in 3 times, so you put your answer up there. Now we multiply. 3 times 5 is 15. Move on to subtraction. And our answer is 0. We don't have anything else to bring down, so our problem is over now. So, 565 divided by 5 gives us a quotient of 113. Alright, hope those steps were helpful to you. Now I'd like you to try some example problems on your own. So I need for you to copy these three problems into box number three, your practice box, on your homework sheet. And I want you to try your best to answer them using the steps that I taught you. Um, you could go back and rewind and watch the steps again if you're unsure of what to do next. And you can also look at your notes that you copied. You should have copied the Does McDonald's Sell Cheeseburgers into your notes section. You can also